Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to Wrenchport. This has been a very interesting one that I've been kind of off and on following for quite some time. It's had a very interesting development cycle, a lot of very interesting news about Porsche potentially funding this game and then, you know, this game making a lot of claims of it being the next eSports you know, main competitive game, and it's like... And we haven't really heard much of it. It seems like that there are many sim racers, more famous ones out there that have, like, done some playtesting of it and had some pretty middling reviews of it. Nothing that's saying that it's been, like, incredible. But the main thing that I remember is when they were playtesting it is how many bugs and how many issues that they had endured and may I say from the little bit that I've been playing of this open public beta test it's been pretty all right I haven't had any major bugs many issues of that kind of nature that I've noticed I've noticed with like the fence it kind of gets kind of staticky looking but I think that's down to like graphical quality like anti-aliasing which I was able to fix a little bit but I mean, all in all, the graphics are pretty alright. The thing that I actually really enjoy, the thing that really led me in, is how the cars handle. It's very different from any other racing game that I've played. But like, it's... I feel like in a way it's realistic, because when you get into the corners with the Fnatic GT DD Pro that I'm running, like, the steering gets incredibly heavy, and, yeah, you can feel kind of the rumbles that are going on right now as we're going over the bumps and whatnot, but it's just the way that the steering gets heavy in the corners and then gets lighter when we're in the straights, it's just... It feels really dumb to say this out loud, but it just, I like the way, how it feels. It's just really different. In a good way, of course. But all in all, with Rensport, what I've done so far is they've had, I've had to just sit down and do what you have to do with like all PC racing games, where you have to sit down and you have to do all your key bindings to make sure all the buttons work and it's, it took me half an hour to do all of that to figure out all the button mapping and whatnot. Finally got there, ran a couple of laps of Hockenheim, which has been such a long time since I've done that course. I'm actually quite happy that it's in this course list, shall we say. And then I started to think, okay, let's try doing like an online lobby. And I'll show you guys in a little bit. We are actually part of one of the official races as we speak, and we are in a qualifying session. And as you guys know, I am not that great of a racer, not that great of a qualifier even. Saved it. And you can kind of tell on the map how we're doing. So we're just a little bit behind uh, car number one. I think that's going to be kind of our main rival, where they're doing about a 153, and so are we. But then if you notice, car number two is just way the heck out there. And he's pulling a 148 for a best lap, so he's probably going to take off in the distance, and we're probably going to sit right behind Silvio, I believe is the guy's name. All right, so we are now in our first race. Let's see how this goes. A um, eh, kind of start. It looks like Al is coming up behind us in the Audi R8 Evo. You can see that on the proximity meter. He's taking it a little bit cautiously. Appreciate that. And somebody looked like that they just ran straight out and went through the runoff area there. I think that was Silvio. So I'm going to. Keep my best to stay on the racing line. We've got Al coming up behind us. Looking to make that move. They're breaking really early, which I actually kind of appreciate. 
We're going to try to catch up to Silvio in his BMW M4. Went just a little bit wide there on the track, but I think we can make this work. Yeah, and like I was saying in uh, qualifying, it looks like Fernandez is just going to take right off into the distance. But more about the game, about the game itself. I'm enjoying the layout of the HUD. And it, something as basic as that, you guys are thinking, like, really? Are we really going to talk about the HUD? And yes, I, I honestly think because, of course, having the big track map in the corner is a given. I like having the brake, the throttle, the force feedback. I think the force feedback input is actually a really nice touch. Of course, I've always enjoyed Gran Turismo's throttle and brake inputs. But having all of that there, and then you can see like the traction control and the ABS settings there as well. Of course, having the tires and then the, the bars and the percentage there in the corner is great. I especially like during qualifying where it showed you down to the thousandth what your predicted lap time was going to be and what your current interval was to said, like what you're currently on to what your previous best time was. So no, it's just everything here, the information that is listed, I'm really enjoying. But again, this is probably really basic stuff. People who have been playing iRacing for years is like, yeah, this is pretty typical. But coming from like a console gaming, coming from the Ultimate, coming from Gran Turismo, Need for Speed, and all that kind of fun stuff, having all this information here is, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Bummer. Uh, bummer, bummer, bummer. It felt floaty. <laughs> yes, I know I got track limits. I crashed. <laughs> and to be fair, when it comes to the track limit system, it seems like it's pretty strict, where it's not like you're hanging both sets of wheels off. It's like you're hanging half of your car off where it starts to count that track limit penalty. And I, I especially enjoy how it gives you like 15 chances per se, or like 15 penalties before it actually gives you like something substantial. All right, we're gonna get another one, aren't we? Did we save it? I think we did. So just these little things is I can't believe some of this stuff hasn't really been implemented so far. Again, it might have been in iRacing, but I just haven't taken the time to really test it out yet. But all in all, Rensport seems that it's worked out a lot of the big bugs, a lot of big issues that we're having during uh, the alpha testing, because, I mean, we're currently sitting in an online lobby and nobody's disconnected and the thing that I was noticing during qualifying at the very least or in practice is when I was following somebody normally in Gran Turismo you can see like a little bit of like a ping issue where the car might skip around just a little bit even if you have really good ping this was really weird because I saw none of that it was like racing against AI where it's just uh oh okay I saved it where it's just like the car is going straight and true like you would expect it to in real life. So it's... I don't know if they're... If the developers have just found a way where ping issues aren't really displayed in car positioning as much as where they're able to figure out when displaying the other people's cars on your screen where it's... They're able to like even or average it out a little bit. I don't know, it's interesting, but as you can tell, uh, we are quite a ways down in third place. 20 seconds down, but we've still got a 33 second gap to fourth. So as long as we don't have any grave issues like we are right now, as long as we don't have too many other massive accidents in the next five laps, I think this is probably where we're going to end up. We're slowly closing that gap. I don't think we're going to get anywhere, though. 
Why am I breaking way back here? One of the other things I was noticing too is the tire wear. Normally when it comes to Gran Turismo, it just seems like that the tires will randomly fall off. I know that we really haven't gotten too much into the tire wear. I mean, the fronts are still at 92% and the rears are at, you know, 95%. But when it comes to the degradation is, I can start feeling the slipping happening a little bit earlier and more gradually versus like it suddenly being like one lap is fine, the next lap it's not. Um, so I'm quite happy with just everything so far, actually. That was a good race. I mean, I didn't really finish anywhere close to where I wanted to, but I mean, I finished and I didn't have any massive accidents, so that was pretty all right. <laughs> all right, so this is the main menu. What we were in is the official contests. So it'll, like every couple of minutes, they'll have a brand new event that you can just kind of drop into. You can register, you can notify, and then you can actually see what the next couple of races are for the next couple of days. I think it's good for like two weeks or something. Yeah, and then it's, it doesn't hold actually for just for a week. But anywho, so then there are competitive leagues. Seems like that they've got a couple set up. And then for custom contests, um, there just isn't anything right now. But um, I was playing around in quick session with the same car I was doing, the 992-911-GT3R. And then there's time trial, of course. Take a quick moment to go through the current car list. Uh, Porsche 911 GT3, Audi R8, Audi R8 GT4, Audi RS. Then this is something that I was a little bit surprised to hear. I thought that it was going to be kind of like a set of Corsa where it's just going to be like GT3 and GT4 only. But we actually do have the BMW M Hybrid V8. Then actually we have a Hyundai Elantra. That's pretty neat. And then we've got the Rensport special edition car. And then, of course, the Porsche 963 LMDH. And then, actually, weirdly enough, the Porsche Mission R. So, I don't know. What is this? 14 cars or thereabouts? Interesting variation, variety, per se. But uh, pretty, pretty cool. Passing the Mission R safety car. And we are off. Last time I did Hockenheim, I'm pretty sure it was Grid Autosport. And that would have been in 2013 or thereabouts. So it's been, weirdly enough, this is one of the tracks that really got me started into sim racing. Grid Autosport as a whole got me into sim racing where it's like, oh, you can drive like really cool GT3 cars on like racetracks and then you got to perform consistently and you got to deal with things like tire wear and damage and that kind of stuff. So I have... Hockenheim always has a little bit of a special place in my heart. But I mean, all in all, like I said, graphically speaking, not too bad. I was going to touch back on the handling. As I was doing that previous race, I was figuring out what I liked so much about it. With Gran Turismo 7, I do like the force feedback. It seems, though, that when you're turning, the steering doesn't really get heavier or lighter, but, like, as you're turning, the bumps are, like, jostling the wheel back and forth. And when you're actually driving and you turn a corner at speed... You notice that the steering gets heavier, and yes, you'll feel a couple of bumps, sure, but like it won't massively change the direction of the wheel at all. So in this, it kind of replicates that, where as you're turning the corner at speed, the steering gets heavier, and yes, you'll feel those little bumps as like it'll push the steering wheel back and forth as you roll over them. But like the steering still remembers that you're a two-ton car or whatever. So generally, it will just continue going in the direction that you're steering. So, again, it's 
I find that more realistic, or at least something that is more logical. So yeah, coming into today, I was incredibly skeptical, where it's just like, I, I've heard a few things about Ren Sport, and unfortunately, it's not really been great things, so I've been very skeptical about what I would experience today if I would fall into a completely bug-ridden hellhole, or... You know, in my mind, I'm actually pleasantly surprised with the quality of the game that we're getting here because it's got, you know, the official events lined up. It doesn't seem like that there are really any custom championships or custom multiplayer games that you can just create or set up for friends. So in my mind, if you and your friends want to play this game, I would register for like those official events that happen every couple of minutes. But I mean, I'm really impressed with the handling model. I'm impressed with the sound design as always. I'm impressed with the UI. It's rather intuitive. I mean, I can even go into the settings. So the settings, it really sets things up in a lot of different ways. I mean, you've got the video and then you've got all of this that you can adjust. And then you've got the separate rendering, and then actually there's VR. I would like to try out VR at some point and actually see what other people are thinking about that as well. But then when we got... Uh, yeah, that's right. Gameplay didn't really screw around much with controls. Oh my god. So the nice thing that, you know, to start with, apparently my clutch pedal was the gas pedal and then the brake wasn't registering. So then all of a sudden I had to go through and then had to recalibrate to make sure that each one of these were being registered correctly. But then there were when I finally did that, but then they're all inverted where it's like zero was a hundred percent and hundred percent was zero percent or weird. So it's, I'm really enjoying the fact that you've got all these different settings for each thing. So, I mean, you've got the overall steering and then you've got, some additional steering settings. And then you've got secondary th throttle, you've got brake, you've got secondary brake, you've got clutch, a secondary clutch, and you've got the handbrake, and then the second, and then you've got the turn left, and then the turn right. So, I mean, they're really, really, as far as sim racing games go, they're really going into detail with, with their bindings here. Of course, you've got the gamepad bindings for when you're on a controller, and then you've got uh, keyboard stuff and of course all of these that you can bind for controller keyboard and uh, wheel but yeah at this point I'm just kind of rambling so in my mind is this the future of sim racing and of esports hard telling but I'm not gonna say no that's the one thing that I'm gonna say up front is the amount of times that I've I would have thought that a game coming out was not going to change the world, and then somehow it did. I'm honestly really impressed with Ren Sport. I think this is a great space for it to be in right now for the public beta. It's a little bit bare bones at the moment, but that's kind of what you would expect out of a public beta. And given the games that have been released in 2024, like full-fledged released games in terrible buggy situations the fact that this game is playable and i haven't had a bug yet and it's just worked and this is beta we're in a public beta test right now like props to the devs at ren sport i am this is cool i like this a lot this is a much better state than freaking forza motorsport was ever in But I think this, there is a place in the sim racing community for this game. Because as much as I enjoyed the set of Corza Convenzione, which again, it's a fantastic game. There's just certain things about it that I just want a little bit more out of it. Where it's, I've wanted to just play like a quick race with, with my brother in a set of Corza. And then they made it the most counterintuitive user experience ever where it's like you have to set up servers and 
I couldn't figure it out and there wasn't any really quick custom lobby. So the fact that this seems like that they've got at least three different options right out of the get-go for just jump in and go makes me very, very excited to see what the future of Ren Sport has. So at this point, like I said, I'm just kind of rambling. This has been a little bit of a longer video than I was expecting, but so far, great. Great, great, great things to come from Rensport. And I'm excited to see what they've got coming next. So let me know down in the comment section down below if you guys are similarly excited, if you're a little bit skeptical, or if you're, if you've already seen it all. Or it's just kind of like, nothing new is happening here. We've already had all of this. Again, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below. Again, if you enjoyed this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a wonderful day today. Take care. Bye!